Hello and welcome back to this introduction to designing for the web. So far we've looked at the foundations of design when we discussed layout and the key to clear content when we talked about typography. But now we're going to look at the most evocative and powerful part of design, which is colour. Colour choice can feel like an incredibly subjective sub uh, subject, can't it? After all, everyone has their own colour preferences and many of us see colour in different ways. Colour also generates a strong emotional response from people, so it can, it can feel like dangerous ground a lot of the time. That said, colour is not as subjective as you may think. There is in fact a great deal of research behind colour selection and that can help you make the right colour choices for your website. There are three elements that influence how we react to colour. The psychology of colour, culture and colour theory. So let's begin by looking at the psychology of colour. We have a strong emotional response to colour. Sometimes this is because of something very obvious, an obvious connection. For example, you probably associate this blue-green colour with water, which means it's hardly surprising that this template from Template Monster relies heavily on that as it's a fishing site. But other times the connection is deeper than that. For example, this coffee shop template uses those browns and reds to create a sense of warmth and coziness that they want to associate with their brand. Another great example is fast food outlets. Have you ever noticed how they all seem to use red and yellow in their branding? And that's because combining red and yellow makes an association in our minds with speed. It's strange, but it's true. The details of colour theory are more than we can cover in this video, but there's no shortage of resources out there to get you started. A quick Google will have you well on the way to learning more about the psychology behind colour. But one word of warning, not all colour associations are universal. Different cultures view colour in different ways. For example, in most Western cultures, red is a signal for danger. Yet in China, it's considered lucky. So while you might want to avoid the heavy use of red for calls to action um, in case people pause before clicking, in China, you would get a very different response. The final observation I wanted to make about our reaction to color is how colors work together. Why is it that some colors work well together while others look absolutely terrible? The answer lies in a discipline called color theory. Colour theory is a huge topic, but the basics are quite simple to grasp. The chances are you've already seen a colour wheel. What you might not know is that a colour wheel can help you select colours which go together. For example, if you draw an equilateral triangle over the top of a colour wheel, you'll find that the colours at each point will go well together. There is a lot more to it than that. Fortunately, you don't need to understand all the details of colour theory because there's a lot of great tools out there to help you with it. For example, there is Adobe Colour, an online tool that helps you create a colour palette. All you do is enter one colour that you like and Adobe Colour will select other colours to go with it. Now you can start by selecting a colour based on your readings around colour psychology or you can um, use a colour that is found in your corporate branding. And then a tool like Adobe Colour will widen that palette for you to give you something that you can work with. If you've no idea of what colour to start with, then another approach is to use an image to get you started. If you have an image that contains some colours that you really love, just upload it to Adobe Colour and it will create a colour palette based on that image. Alternatively, you can just browse around Adobe Colour because there's loads of other people that have uploaded their colour palettes and you can simply find one that you like to work with. When it comes to using your colour palette, there are a couple of things that you need to bear in mind. First, focus your use on a small number of colours. In fact, to get started, I recommend having just a primary colour and a secondary colour. Your primary colour will make up the vast majority of your interface, and then your secondary colour can be used sparingly to draw the user's attention to key elements. 
You can always use multiple shades of your primary color to add a little bit of interest. A shade of a color is essentially either a lightening or a darkening of that single color. Look what happens when we take this color and make it darker or lighter. You end up with a range of colors to work with while not overwhelming the user with lots of different competing colors. This can lead to really effective and really sophisticated design. Take for example this Magento template for an electronics store that's found on Template Monster. Notice how the majority of the interface is either that kind of dark bluey grey or a lighter version of the same colour. The orange is only used to draw the user's attention to key elements such as the price or calls to action buttons. The second thing to bear in mind is how people view colours and the fact that the way people view colours varies. For example, 1 in 12 men are colourblind and 1 in 200 women. And that means almost 5% of the people who visit your website cannot perceive the full range of colours you have there. This means we can't rely on colour alone to convey meaning. If we want to draw attention to calls to action, for example, we need to use things like contrast, size and styling as well as colour. But it's not just colour blindness that impacts how we see colour. The device we're viewing it on can also make a huge difference too. Different screens display colour in radically different ways. If you've ever walked into an electronics store and looked at all the different TVs when they're all playing the same thing, you'll be able to see what I mean. Different screens show the colours in different ways. Some screens are just poorly configured and others are just not particularly good quality. The problem is that as designers, we've often um, inv invested in a high-end monitor that we've got a really good monitor to work with, and that shows all the subtleties of colour that ends up being lost on our users who are using cheaper monitors. On cheaper monitors, you see that colour tends to shift towards either end of the spectrum. In other words, a dark blue would become almost black, and a light grey would be almost invisible on a white background. This means we cannot just use a single colour um, as it's specified in something like a print style guide. Instead, we need to adapt our colours to work well on the web and accept the fact that different devices will display the colours in different ways. Then, of course, there's mobile devices too. These are often viewed outside with a high degree of screen glare on them. And this means that subtle use of colours and shades are almost entirely lost. For example, grey text on a white background will become incredibly hard to read on a mobile device. And this is also a very big deal for users with visual impairments. And I'm not just talking about partially sighted um, users either, I'm talking about the elderly. This is why I like this Joomla template that I found on Template Monster. Look at the contrast between the body copy and the background. The text is so easy to read. But look what happens if I change the colour to something more subtle. Immediately you have to strain your eyes to read what is written. Fortunately, there are tools and guidelines available um, to ensure good contrast if you're in doubt. That way you can ensure everyone can read your content. And remember, ultimately that's what your design is there for. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. The main things that I want you to take away is that your choice of colour shouldn't be just about your own personal preferences. Instead, we need to select colours based on the emotional response we want to elicit. And more than that, we should build colour palettes based on colour theory to ensure that our colours all work together well. Remember not to use too many colours, but instead restrict your palette to the main primary colour you're going to work with and one that you can use to draw attention to key elements. You can always use shades of your primary colour to allow variation if you need to. Finally, don't forget that not everyone is going to be viewing your design on the same monitor as you. Subtle designs may look great on your screen, but they can become unreadable elsewhere. Always check the contrast of your designs. So, in our next lesson, we turn our attention to imagery and how we can use that to communicate our message and motivate our users. But until then, thanks for watching.